Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the United States of America Mathematical Olympiad year 2000. Problem number one. We say that function f from a set of real numbers into itself is very convex, is if f of x plus f of y over 2 is greater than or equal f of x plus y over 2 plus the absolute value of x minus y for all the real numbers x and y. And you might be thinking, why haven't I heard about very convex functions? Well, the reason is so that there is no such function. So no, no function satisfies this functional inequality. It's a nice problem. Here are my hints. First, let g of x be equal f of x minus f of 0 uh, and express our inequality in terms of this new function g. Notice that we do it, we do it to normalize our function g of 0 is 0. And then, first, set y to be minus x to show that g of x plus g of minus x is greater than or equal 0. And then, set y to be 0 and show that g of x is greater than or equal 2 times g of x over 2 plus 2 times the absolute value of g of x, sorry and iterate this inequality. So go on and on substituting, expressing this inequality in terms of g of h of x over 4, g of x over 8, and so on. And you should get some kind of contradiction as you pass to a limit. Induction may be useful. And also I have noted there one useful fact from mathematical analysis, that if we have, if we have two sequences, First, with, first is bounded from below, and the second one diverges to plus infinity, then the sum of the sequences also diverges to plus infinity. So give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Okay. So, as I suggested, let's introduce a new function to start, to start with. So let, let g of x equal f of x minus f of 0 and suppose suppose and suppose that f is very convex that very such, such a function well then then we have the following. Now I will substitute, instead of f of x, I will write g of x plus f of 0. So we have g of x plus f of 0 plus g of y plus f of 0 over 2 is greater than or equal. Instead of f of x plus y over 2, I will write g of x plus y over 2 plus f of 0 minus the absolute value of x minus y. And now, here we have f of 0, f of 0 over 2, and here we have f of 0, so it's gone. And we have the following, g of x plus g of y over 2 is greater than or equal g of x plus y over 2 plus the absolute value of x minus y, which means that our function g is also very convex. It's also very convex. And moreover, moreover, notice what is g of 0? Well, g of 0 is f of 0 minus f of 0. So no matter the f of 0, it's obviously always 0. Very well. Now, let's set, let's set y to be minus x. Then we have the following. y equals minus x. So we have I will be I will be using from now on I will be using this functional inequality. Then we have g of x plus g of minus x over 2 is greater than or equal g of 0 plus the absolute value of 2 times x. But g of 0 is 0, so we have g of x 
plus g of minus x is greater than or equal 4 times the absolute value of x. And notice in particular, this is obviously greater than or equal 0 for every x. Let's mark it by square. It will be useful later. Now, I wish to set something else. Now, I wish to set y to be equal 0. Then we have the following. g of x plus g of 0 over 2 is greater than or equal g of x over 2 plus the absolute value of x. But g of 0 is 0, so we get the following. Maybe let's write it in yellow. g of x is greater than or equal 2 times g of x over 2 plus 2 times the absolute value of x for every real number x. That is true. And now, what I will do, I will iterate this inequality over and over again. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. g of x is greater than or equal 2 times g of x over 2 plus 2 times the absolute value of x. But now, g of x over 2, maybe let's write it in yellow, this part is greater than or equal of what? Of 2 times g of x over 4 plus 2 times the absolute value of x over 2. Then we have plus 2 times the absolute value of x. And let's simplify it. This is 4 times g of x over 4. Then we have combining plus 4 times the absolute value of x. And now I will do it again. I will replace g of x over 4 by 2 times g of x over 2, g of x over 8, sorry, plus 2 times the absolute value of x over 4. And what's left is 4 times the absolute value of x. And now let's simplify it. We have 8 times g of x over 6, g of x over 8, plus, plus what exactly? 4 cancels with, with this 4, and we have 2 absolute value of x, but plus 4 absolute value of x, so plus 6 absolute value of x. Now I will do it once more, so we'll see the pattern more clearly. 2 times g of x over 16 plus 2 times x over x over 8 plus 6 times the absolute value of x and that is equal to 16 g of x over 16 plus 8 cancels with this 8 and we have plus 8 times the absolute value of x. At that point, it should be pretty easy to see what's happening. After n iterations, this is going to be greater than or equal 2 to the power of n, g of x over 2 to the power of n, plus 2n, the absolute value of x. For example, if n equals 3, we have exactly this. If, x, if n equals 4, we have exactly this. And this is true for every, for every natural number, positive integer, let's say. Again, if you do not believe me, or if it's not rigorous enough for you, prove it by induction. Proving it, proving it by induction is almost trivial. Okay, so maybe let's write it. I will put quantifiers once again. So we have established that for every real number x and for every positive integer n, g of x is always greater than or equal 2 to the power of n, g of x over 2 to the power of n plus 2n 
the absolute value of x. Okay, but this is true for every x, so also g of minus x is also greater than or equal 2 to the power of n, g of minus x 2 to the power of n plus 2n, well, the absolute value of x is the same as the absolute value of minus x. And now I will take these two inequalities and I will add them together. And I will obtain the following. Uh, maybe let's write it in yellow, yes. g of x plus g of minus x is greater than or equal to the power of n g of x over 2 to the power of n plus g of minus x over 2 to the power of n plus 4n times the absolute value of x. And now, let's see. Notice that this does not depend on n. Does not depend on n. And moreover, by this little fact, which I have proven, g of x plus g of minus x is always non-negative. So this part right here is greater than or equal to zero by our condition square. And this part, if x is non-zero, it diverges to plus infinity as n goes to plus infinity, of course, if x is not zero. Okay, so now we have a problem, because that means that the entire right-hand side, since this is bounded from below from by zero, this diverges, the entire right-hand side must diverge. So, taking passing to a limit, so taking taking x to be non-zero and n going to plus infinity, we have the following g of x plus g of minus x is greater than or equal plus infinity because the right hand side diverges and clearly this is a problem. It cannot happen because our function attains real values. Contradiction, finally. Finally, we have a contradiction, which means that there is no very convex function. That's the reason why you haven't heard about it. So yes, very nice problem, I'd say. Very, very nice. From the United States. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.